Hello Linux fans, Rob here. Welcome to Linux Quest and thank you very much for watching. So over the past couple of weeks I did several videos on the Antergos distribution which is an Arch based distribution and really um, I have just high regard for what the Antergos team has put in place with this OS. Now there are several other very good Arch based distributions. Uh, the video we did last night, uh, Sudo Reboot Myself, uh, he has actually moved over to Manjaro, and I think he's enjoying that quite a bit. That's a nice distribution. Uh, there's also a Pricity OS, and um, we have a video here at Linux Quest that you can check that out, as well as Manjaro. And then we recently did an interview with developer Jody James, who has an independent distribution, OB Revenge. And I'm, I'm just going to give you a little uh, hint here. He's working on some things that we're probably soon going to take another look at. I'm very excited about the direction that Jody is taking OB Revenge. And uh, so kind of looking forward to that one. So stay tuned for maybe another video there. And I say all of that to say that I am fast becoming a, a real Arch fan. So um, that's what leads me to this video. So as I was trying out all of the desktop environments through Antergos, um, I tried Mate. And the first time I tried it, it installed with a blank panel. So everything you see here, uh, you know, with the launcher and clock, so on and so forth, taskbar controls, there was nothing there. It was all blank. So I chalked it up to a bad install. Well, last night I, I downloaded a fresh ISO, decided to go ahead and do an install because I really wanted to see what the Mate desktop looks like. Um, you know, what how things were implemented, that kind of thing. And thought, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and do a video and that'll complete the, um, you know, the Antergos series, if you will. Um, but again, I was presented with a blank panel and was kind of disappointed. Now, as you can tell, I was able to get things set up and it's all functioning fine. But it seems to me like that's the one area where maybe either they didn't do their homework or perhaps I just I've had two bad installs in a row. Perhaps um, it just seemed very incomplete presented again with a blank panel. Now I was able to go in and add the Mint launcher, which works very well here. And in fact, it actually seems to launch faster than I typically experience uh, in the Cinnamon desktop environment. Um, it's very easy to set up, and you see by default the the uh, Numix uh, theme is in place here. So all of that was in place, but I had to go in and actually uh, add several things to really complete the uh, Mate desktop environment. So if we go over to uh, Preferences, I had to install, and again, not a problem. Uh, most of this was done through the AUR. I was able to install the Mate Tweak uh, as well as the Plank and get everything set up for the most part. Now, I did run into some just kind of quirky issues um, and getting everything set up and in place and some of that had to do with theming and some of that had to do with uh, the actual launcher menu and I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about here so we're gonna right click and go to add to panel and you have um, as far as these applets and everything and launchers uh, you had what you needed there for the most part now in the past what I typically use is the menu bar so I'm gonna go ahead and add that now the menu bar works just fine, but as you'll see here, you've got this question mark icon, which is kind of out of place, and it just takes away from what otherwise would be a, a very cohesive themed UI, uh, but everything works, so you have your typical drop-down list of applications and places and system, and all of that themed out fine, but this question mark over here, I just couldn't, I guess my, um, I couldn't let myself ignore it. Now I went in and changed a few themes and was able to get a an icon there that was just kind of you know four squares and very generic but still to me this is kind of a disappointment really because Antergos is such a nice distribution and all of the other desktop environments that I tried were so uh, well integrated into the OS I really expected the same thing with certainly with a popular uh, desktop such as Mate. 
So kind of let down there. But as you can tell, I was able to make it work. I'll say that again, with exception to some of these just odd things that just, it's almost like it wasn't ready. It wasn't ready to release um, or, or it just wasn't given the time um, that it needed to make it complete. So, uh, you know, some of the applets, again, just really were a right click and add to panel. And, and if you're not familiar with what those applets are, it's easy enough to add and remove. So if you add something that you're not familiar with, um, you know, we'll, we'll add eyes here, for example. Um, so if you add eyes and you go, oops, I didn't want to add that, it's as easy as right clicking and removing from panel. So you're not going to get into too much trouble or anything setting it up. Now, the tinker part of me, the part that likes to experiment and mess around and build things on an OS, really I'm not going to complain too much because I kind of enjoyed it. You know, I, I was uh, messing around with themes and that kind of thing anyway. So uh, for me, it's not a huge deal. But if you were someone who just wanted to install and take off running with your operating system and, and get to work, um, I would recommend that you do not install the Mate desktop uh, under Antergos at this point. Now that may change uh, in the future and I'm certainly going to keep my eye on that. But I just kind of wanted to share this with you. Um, and, you know, otherwise, I'm very pleased with the speed at which everything's running. Uh, everything functions. I've had no crashes or anything like that. Uh, and I will say again that the Mint menu here, which was an option out of the gate, uh, does very well here. It, uh, the theme matches just fine. Um, you are able to, and here's another little quirk. So right now I'm clicking on the desktop, left clicking, trying to get the menu to disappear. Um, but you, it, it will not unless you go over and you click on the icon or if you hit the key which you program in. So I'm going to hit the key. Now it will disappear. So let's go into preferences and we'll take a look at that. I'll show you what up. So I've got that uh, key bound to Z. All right. Now that keyboard sh shortcut should launch the menu as well, but it is not. So manually I have to go up and click. Now it will close. Okay. So um, just something to be aware of. It's not a deal breaker for me, but. Um, you know, it would be very nice if the key would launch it. So again, it feels kind of incomplete. I've enjoyed going in and getting it set up. And um, like I say, everything on here will work and everything does what it's supposed to do. Uh, I was not able to get uh, one of the features that you would see in Ubuntu Mate, which would be the ability to toggle on the indicators. And the indicators give you added functionality with the various um, icons here. So for example, sound, uh, we are at a vertical scroll bar. If you were able to enable the indicator, you would have a horizontal scroll bar with then options to go into deeper settings under that. And that's one of the things that makes Ubuntu Mate um, so nice is all of the small details. So. I'm going to keep this one kind of short. I did, I did want to share this with you in case there's someone out there who's trying to decide which desktop environment that they want to try uh, with this distribution. And I have to say at this point, reluctantly have to say at this point, skip over Mate because it just doesn't seem ready. So um, for what that's worth, or if you're looking for something that you can go in and, and build and, and, um, and get set up yourself, then you would want to try Mate at this point. So hope that helps and we will check you later.